Greetings antique radio enthusiasts. Welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a restoration on a 1924 Chelsea 122 regenerative receiver. Now, if you've been following this channel, you'll know in the last episode what happened and what brought us to this point here. If not, then just a very quick recap. What we have is the Chelsea 122 receiver. It was located, all these parts were located in this box. Now this here is a homebrew radio that has a homemade front panel on it. What happened, and to give you a little bit of background, is this 122 receiver actually had a legitimate front panel on it. And it was on here, and all these parts were in here. Now the previous owner, I guess somewhere along the line, this thing had cracked. So there's a big crack in this panel. So whoever, somewhere along the line, they replaced it with this homemade panel here. So I had a Chelsea 122 with a homemade front panel on it. Then I purchased what was in this case, and inside this case, even though it had a Chelsea 122 front panel on it, it was actually a home-built receiver in it. They had a whole bunch of parts thrown in there that were non-Chelsea. So, what I did last episode was I pulled all the non-Chelsea parts out of the, this box here and pulled everything all this stuff out of this box here. I put the stuff that was in here into here and I created a brand new home-built radio that is made with non-Chelsea parts. So this here is an actual homebrew regenerative receiver that works quite well. So with that out of the way we're going to start by showing you the disassembly that got us to this point here. And then I'm going to go ahead and figure out what we're going to do about this case. haven't quite figured that out. It's in bad shape. Uh, and we're going to clean this thing up. Uh, I need to clean all these parts up, uh, do some repairs here replace some of this wiring, which is modern wiring. I need to replace this transformer, test this transformer. There's a lot to be done, but when we're finished, we should have a fully functional, fully restored 1924 Chelsea 122 regenerative receiver. So the first step is going to be taking apart the 122 now since I already know how one of these is wired, I'm just going to go ahead and disassemble this one. Alright, so first step, let's go ahead and start removing some wires. I do have plenty of pictures of this wiring, so I'm not too worried about it.
So, all that will go to the home built video. Okay, so now I have my case for the home bill right here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started on cleaning up this panel. Now one of the things about these phenolic panels is they are layered. Uh, as you can see from the chipping there, you don't these layers are kind of thin. Well, the real shiny layer is on the top. If you buff down through that layer, you hit a dull layer and it looks like garbage. So you got to be real careful when you're cleaning these things. Now this does have some surface cracks in it, so I have to be real careful there. But uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting it cleaned up. Some kind of lacquer or something, let me see. Yeah, I think it is actually. There's lacquer on here. I gotta clean this stuff off. Well, I've been working on cleaning up parts with the Dremel here. Um, I've got uh, yeah, quite a few things taken care of so far. I'm at a point now where I need to disassemble some of this. I need to get this off of here. I'm not going to use that. Uh, what I've got is this is the transformer assembly and also some of the stuff that goes on the front panel. 
All this wiring is modern wiring. I'm going to replace it with appropriate wiring, so I need to go ahead and desolder it. Um, and I'm going to remove all this stuff so that I can feel it'll facilitate the cleaning of these items so that I can go ahead and reassemble them and rewire everything. Uh, so that's what I've been working on, and I'm going to continue here. Well, shoot, didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. Let's solder it on there. So, got this all of this assembled, and I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning up parts, and then uh, once I get done with that, well, we'll go ahead and uh, start looking at reassembly. Something that was bothering me was the fact that these tube sockets are definitely not Chelsea Radio tube sockets. The reason I know that is Chelsea only has two tube sockets that they produced and they're in all their radios and that is the Model 60 and the Model 61. Now this is obviously for a uh, 201 type tube, this is for a WD-11. And the ZR4s have these tube sockets in them as well and I would assume the 122s do too. But Doing some research, uh, one of the things I discovered was two of my ZR4s actually have this tube socket in it. So this is out of one of my ZR4s. They are identical. I did a little research, discovered that these are made by a company called WSCO. Now I can't really find much more information other than that. But what I'm assuming is the ZR4s were made for gimbal department stores and they tended to cheapen the Chelsea radio cabinets and probably some of the components as well. So I'd assume that when gimbals contracted with Chelsea they probably had these tube sockets put in because they were a lot cheaper to make than these more robust uh, Chelsea tube sockets. So with them having uh, an abundance of these probably in stock, I could see where Chelsea used them to go ahead and make their 122s, even though those weren't sold uh, 
through gimbals. These tube sockets are definitely the correct tube sockets for this radio. I don't know what that white stuff was. Very nasty. And seven more to go.
Okay, so uh, now I'm going to get started on wiring this front panel. Uh, I went ahead and pre-cut some of these wires and labeled them and labeled all the other ones so I can kind of have a better system of getting this thing together. Uh, I do need to tin all these, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've got a couple of connections I need to make on here. Um, one of them is this capacitor here it needs to be hooked right there. I'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'll go ahead and hook this up. Needs to go to ground. I've got this ground over here. minus, which is also tied to ground, it goes to that capacitor. It's going to go to there, the bottom of that. i got to get that to the A minus. So I need the A minus. A minus, right here. side. Mm 
y minus. boy right here needs to go right there. So that's going on transformer one, the plate. This is going to the plate on tube one. This is going to the grid leak, which is going to be a direct solder, so I don't need to put anything on it. And that's going to the A minus. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those tabs on there. I don't need this ground tab anymore. I don't know where that went. That's all the wires that are on the plate. Now I need to get the ones that are going off the plate. Okay, loudspeaker. So that gives me all my cables. Alright. So that's everything on the front panel.
All right, so uh, what I'm going to do here, I got some bus wires that need to be made. Okay, this one's already pre-made. That goes from grid to grid. I need a grid to grid from here. So I've got a little bit of bus wire here and a couple tabs. I'm going to go ahead and make that. I went ahead and made this one already. This goes from the plate side of uh, the transformer over here to the uh, plate on here, which I can go ahead and do right now, maybe, see if I can get it to stay. There we go. Go ahead and form this one. Press bars in place. another little piece of bus wire from here to here. Go ahead and stick that on there. There it goes. Alright, so for uh, my B mine or my A plus B minus. I need to have a little um, jumper between two terminals on the back. So what I did is I traced out where the terminals are going to go and I'm going to go ahead and make one out of copper. Just going to take a few minutes.
Alright, so this is going to go attached to a wire that's going to come up here. My A plus, B minus, it's going to go to that filament side. So on the primary side filament, so I'm going to come up from here to the back of the cabinet. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and solder this real quick. That will go on the cabinet. The other side goes right here. The other wire that I got to solder is the one that's going to go to R1. of that and that just solders to my wiper arm on the resistor so I've got all the wiring I could possibly do done on this now it's just a matter of hooking both sides up So, this is going to go to here, this goes to there, actually I think I'm going to do that, Takes care of that one. So I'll go to tube one plate. It's going to be right there. This is going to go as the loudspeaker that goes to my plate over here. Okay, I feel pretty comfortable with my cable lengths. Uh, I was a little nervous about them, but I think this is going to work. So, uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and finish up. There are a couple things I gotta do here. Right? Red leak here. Get that soldered on. Grid leak. Um, tighten that up. That's good. This is my A minus. Here's my A plus B minus. Ah, uh, yeah, I gotta get my B plus. This needs to be soldered to here. Telephone needs to go over there. Wait a minute, where is my B plus plus? Ah, oh, there it is. A minus. Plus plus. All right, that's it. It is everything's wired up the way it should be. So now it's just a matter of getting the case done and putting it all back in the case. Well, this concludes part one of this restoration. Part two is going to include restoration of the case, reassembly of the radio, testing and operations. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see part two or other videos in these uh, different series, then hit the subscribe button. In the meantime, happy restorations everybody. Hope you have a good day. See you next video. Bye.